تلویزیون فردا در این قسمت برنامه با خود یکی از کاندید های انتخاباتی که در پیش رو داریم و انتخاباتی که خب تقریبا چند روز در ماه مارچ انشاءالا می باشه و همچنان که می انتخابات استیت است در اینجا انتخابات خود استرالیای جنوبی امشب در برنامه تلویزیون فردا یکی از کاندید های طرف جنوب عدلی در خود داریم و کوش میکنیم در افتای بعد کاندید های بیشتر در تلویزیون فردا بیاریم و باشان مصاحبه های داشته باشیم خب مصاحبه این به انگلیسی می باشه امیدوار هستم که شما متون عزیز بتونین از این مصاحبه چیزی بگیریم و در کل اگر امکاناتش بود در هفته آینده ان ترجمهش خواهم کرد در برنامه امشب با ما خانم جیسن استنسون هست ما امیدوار هستیم که صحیح تلفظ کرده باشه امید منو بر خودش تلفظ بکنن به خاطر که خب طبعا موضوعات تلفظ همیشه پیش میاد جن very very welcome to our city tonight thank you so much for having me it's absolutely brilliant to be spending the evening with you thank you very much uh, please let us know uh, a little bit about your background. I know you've been working with the Channel 7. No worries. Well, my name's Jane Stinson, and right at the moment, I'm the Labor Party's candidate for the seat of Badco, and it is a seat centred around uh, the Plimpton area, so the inner southwestern suburbs of Adelaide. So it stretches all the way from Ashford, Carrollta Park, North Plimpton, all the way down to South Plimpton, Edwardstown, and Ascot Park. Uh, so it's quite a broad area, uh, but it's a fantastic area, and I live pretty much in the middle of it at Black Forest. Right. So I'm very, very lucky to be pre-selected and be the candidate. It's interesting because I live in Plimpton Park. I never heard this. Is this a new suburb? Or? It is. It's a new seat at the next a state election. A new seat, election. obviously, yeah. 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 Um, so previously it was basically called Ashford, but they've changed the boundaries a little bit, and now it'll be called Badco. And it's actually named after one of Australia's great war heroes, a guy called Major Peter Badco, who fought in the Vietnam War, and he actually won a Victoria Cross for acts of bravery. So that's why the seat's called Badco, but it is a new name to a lot of, uh, a lot of people in the area. Um, Right. But hopefully, um, and hopefully a, a new uh, candidate and a new uh, MP after uh, March the 17th. <laughs> yes, I mean, look, yeah. <laughs> obviously, a very interesting background with the uh, yeah, uh, honours behind, behind that, obviously. Yeah, mm -hmm. Congratulations for that, and uh, we obviously hope you get the seat. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sure this interview will be the clincher, see? <laughs> <laughs> All important. Yeah, oh, yeah, we'll see how we go. Uh, <laughs> please let us know. Uh, I, I know you work with the uh, Welcome to Australia, right? Mm. The organization. What was your role with them? Yeah, well, um, as you mentioned earlier, I've, I'm a television journalist by trade. Mm -hmm. So for the last few years, I've been working for Channel 7 News. Before that, I was with Network 10. And I started out as a cadet reporter with the ABC uh, more years ago now than I care <laughs> to admit. Um, but I think being a journalist, uh, you know, you have a lot of contact with people from lots of different places yeah. uh, when you're in Australia. But also, um, I've been lucky enough to work overseas as well in places like India and Cambodia and Africa. Africa and when you're experiencing those cultures you realize just how lucky we are here in Australia exactly. so it's no surprise of course that um, more people from around the world um, want to join us here some people have uh, come from some pretty desperate situations around the world and I've had a little window into some of those situations when I've been a journalist um, it's a big thing for people to make the decision to leave their home country mm. um, to travel sometimes to get on a boat sometimes to get on a plane and to come out to a land that they don't know at all or don't know very well in Australia. So I think um, it shows uh, d definitely some desperation from people but also a great deal of bravery um, to be able to uh, take those steps for themselves and their families to create a better life for their children to come out to, to Australia. So I greatly admire people who do that um, and people who come out for economic reasons as well who mm -hmm. uh, give up um, their close contact with their home country to come and make a new life in Australia and to make our country better and stronger. Mm -hmm. So I suppose that's the motivation for me um, with working like organisations like the Australian Refugee Association and also Welcome to Australia, um, which does both of those organisations do a lot of work to welcome new arrivals to our country, to help them settle in and to make sure that they feel part of uh, the great land that is Australia. Oh, beautiful. Well, uh that's, that sounds really good. <laughs> <laughs> it is really good. I have to say it's a little bit selfish in some ways um, because I think uh, as Australians, um, uh, you know, 
Australians who were born here, you get a great deal out of working with people from different cultures, um, different religions, mm -hmm. um, different backgrounds. Um, certainly my friends have um, opened my eyes to the world, um, people that I've met through my work with the Refugee Association and with Welcome to Australia. Um, and everything from teaching me new dishes to cook at home to teaching me a few words in another language, um, but also giving me a greater appreciation of how lucky we are here. Exactly right. I, I remember when I was reading the history of Afghans in mm. Australia, we're coming by camels. Yes, Australia. one of the very first immigrant groups, mm. yeah. And what they brought to Australia is amazing. For example, uh, the first Middle Eastern dancing or mm. Middle Eastern music was brought by Afghans, so yeah. this is something different. And obviously each uh, migrant group coming to here brings something new. Mm. Um, well, this is my opinion, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was lucky enough to work in Alice Springs for the ABC when I was quite young, and the interior of our country really wouldn't have been, um, uh, I suppose, um, developed were it not for the Afghan Cavaliers mm. coming out. They played an absolutely critical role um, in Australia's development in what was a really harsh time as well. And you can still see um, that culture in the Northern Territory. Um, and I think that, that we owe a great um, debt of thanks uh, to those Afghan Cavaliers who came out and helped make our country what it is. Yes, with no doubt, obviously, a lot of scholars also are in disbelief that if mm. Afghan was not there, obviously, the Australia wouldn't be. Uh, developed as it is right now, yeah, which, absolutely. Which is, which is again the the rule of the migrant in this country. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, when you said before you've been in Africa, I thought you've been in Afghanistan. So sort of you oh. know, Africa. Oh, I thought I'd wow. love to go to Afghanistan. Yeah, but no, as a journalist not yet. In Afghanistan would be that would uh, be quite an experience. Easy, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Uh, let us know if, if uh, for example, you uh, or in the future, obviously, you've been candidate or you've been uh, selected or mm. elected. So, <laughs> what is your goal or what is your aim for the refugees? What, how sort of help will the refugee will get from you? Yeah, well. Um I know that there's a very thorough process um, of assessment for people who come to Australia. Mm -hmm. um, and there's different ways that people come to Australia. Obviously, some people come as skilled migrants and they go through one process um, to make sure that their skills fit with the skills that we need in Australia. Uh, and um, I suppose I want to see those people feel welcomed and be able to set up businesses, be able to build their lives, to be able to get good educations for their kids and to be able to contribute meaningfully to um, Australia. Australia and equally the, the same is what I want for people who come from uh, you know through the humanitarian pathway or as refugees those people also go through incredibly uh, detailed processes in terms of security and vetting and so forth so if they are accepted as refugees then I think Australians can have a fair level of confidence um, that they're people um, who really deserve to be in Australia uh, under our um, humanitarian obligations um, so and for those people as well well, um, I think that they deserve the opportunity to start afresh in a place like Australia, to be able to build a business, uh, to build their families and contribute. And something that I think is um, really important that a lot of a lot of us miss sometimes is just the economic value of migrants. Um, so whether you come as a skilled migrant or as a refugee, um, there is a, a huge multiplier effect. Um, people who are new to this country uh, generate more jobs and set up more businesses um, than people who were born here. Mm. Um, and we really need that. Uh, anyone will tell you that uh, in Australia and in Adelaide, um, we, we want people to be starting up new enterprises and to be building our economy. So um, I think if we can encourage people uh, to do that, then that's a great thing uh, for them and their families to have a level of um, sustainability, I suppose, in their own families and their own communities. But also it's a wonderful thing for our economy and I think we should really um, cherish and, and encourage our multicultural communities um, to contribute in whatever way they can. And also to experience, um, you know, to meet as many uh, Australians who've been here for a long time as mm. possible, uh, because uh, I think Aussies are a pretty good bunch, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, and we're pretty welcoming people. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much, Jen. And um, of course, if the people are having any doubt on refugees' contribution, they should go to the Prospect area, to Kilburn area, and have a look how the Afghan, especially the community we are in. And I'm sure there are lots of others, Vietnamese, previous Italians, and people. Obviously, they all played their role. But Afghans been in Kilburn and Prospect area, and they have. Develop the area like like a new sort of um, 
uh, suburb, and now yes. I heard that people couldn't couldn't go there at the night time. Obviously, now this is a beautiful area, and that yeah, and, and a Kevo. delicious area as well. Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> That's always the case. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much for coming, Jen, tonight. Thank you so much for having me. It's an absolute pleasure, and uh, I'll be back anytime you'll have me in your fabulous little studio. Thank you very much. Thank you.